Professor Marotta, Professor Giovanni okay. Marotta, we can proceed. Yes. Okay, Professor. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Professor Milton, uh, Professor Tishovo, uh, Council Kaur. Uh, today we are uh, gathering here because we're going to, to discuss uh, the word day against uh, trafficking in person that, that was uh, last Friday. We are going to have the presence of uh, the, partic the participation of uh, Pro Professor Darwa Kanath Tripathi, he is from the Singularity University from India. Um, professor Den Denakopon Teshobo, he is an adjunct professor of international law, Case Western Reserve University School of Law in the USA. Also, um, we are going to have the companion of Marie Kaur. She's an assistant counsel at the International Criminal Court in the, in the, in the Hague. At the same time, is going to join us uh, Professor Primpon from uh, founder of the of law of the Dean of Jimpa, uh, uh, Professor Alessandro Lanciotti and Maria Mercedes Pisani. They are international professor of law um, in Italy. And finally, uh, also Gudam uh, Rama Gudamela. She's a professor in international in India. Welcome everyone. And I pass the floor to uh, Professor Milton. Uh, thank you, Professor Giovanni Marotta. Giovanni Marotta is a specialist in uh, human international human rights law. He's uh, well trained. Uh, he's an American trained lawyer as well as uh, uh, has had his training in Europe. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Marotta, for your erudite introduction. Our viewers uh, all over the world, we welcome you to this session today. Uh, we have a panel of professors ready to be able to address the key thematic point of today. We have uh, professors right in the United States. We have India represented. We have uh, South Africa represented and uh, a number of other countries. All right, um, <clears throat> on the 18th of December, 2013, the United Nations General Assembly adopted resolution 68 stroke 192, declaring July 30th as World Day against trafficking in persons. The day has been observed since July 30th, 2014. It was observed last week. This has become a recurring annual event observed by all nations. Um, basically, the thematic points of observation of this day revolve around uh, the need to raise awareness of the situation or the plight of the victims of the scourge of human trafficking, which is trafficking uh, in persons. And secondly, to be able to promote and protect the rights of the victims. Alarmingly, in any given time, it is estimated that a staggering 2.5 million victims are trapped in modern day slavery, <clears throat> which entails sexual ex exploitation, forced labor, uh, smuggling of immigrants, of migrants, and no country has been spared, whether it's the country of origin, uh, of uh, transit or destination. In other words, the school just transcended all boundaries, geographical boundaries. So today we are privileged to have uh, well-accomplished professors uh, to be able to uh, analyze the situation and make their presentations. Uh, the thematic discussion or discourse, the focus for the discourse will be revolving around six main questions. The first one will be, what is the international legal definition of trafficking in persons, particularly with reference to adults? And the next would be, is trafficking in persons an international crime under the Rome Statute? Does it fall under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court? If not, why not? Uh, this is basically a question because we are largely basically international criminal lawyers. So any topic we examine, we must be able to apply the principles of uh, international criminal law and see where it ends. The other question which the panelists will be dealing with is what is the relationship between human rights or international human rights and human trafficking? 
or trafficking in person. Uh, do states have, the next question is, do states have any legal obligation to the victims of human trafficking? What is the global plan to combat the scourge of human trafficking or trafficking in person? Do we have any global institutional framework in place to address it? The other question would be, do we have national and regional legal solutions to this scourge? Uh, so uh, I'm going to welcome our professors, uh, the expert panelists to be able to address uh, the questions that uh, we've just outlined. So the first question would be, what is the legal um, definition of trafficking in persons with particular reference to adults? So um, I leave that to any other panelists who may be able to address that. <coughs> yes, Professor Marota. Okay. Well, you know, uh, you're a specialist in yes, the uh, the in, proceeds. Sir. Yes, uh, for us, the, the 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 definition of trafficking in person uh, it shall mean the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of the threat or use of force or, or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power, of a position of vulnerability, or, or of the giving of or receiving of payment or benefit to achieve the consent of a, of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. And it's understood uh, the exploitation shall include a minimum of uh, the exploitation of prostitution of other or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor, or service slavery, or services to slavery, or practice similar to slavery, slavery, servitude, or the removal of organs. Uh, that's it. That's it. Um, we can find that definition on. It was adopted in the in the protocol to prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, of the year two thousand. Uh, under, res under resolution of the Assembly of the United Nations 55 uh, Many uh, national laws uh, also have uh, complied uh, their own uh, um, statutes against uh, human trafficking over, over the issue. Other countries are more specific uh, related to child pornography. Um, they're more, they're also there is uh, um, in the American human rights system, there is um, a chapter um, that is in the commission that they have also their own resolution related to human trafficking because in the past 10 years, uh, the Venezuelan exodus um, has spread a lot of vulner vulnerability against uh, women, uh, girls and, uh, um, and, and children. Um, related to 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 human trafficking for uh, sexual or um, or labor labor uh, exploitation. So that, that's the core. That that's the the, the meaning. Um, it reminds us uh, uh, many uh, back in the nineteen in the nineteenth centuries between the sixteenth and the nineteenth century, all the human trafficking that we used to to have. Uh, related to humans from Africa or from Asia that were used um, as slavers in America. Uh, when, when it stopped the, the abductions of African people to work in, in America, the other migrants that were uh, abducted or under, under a, a very phony contracts were the Chinese people. Uh, the many uh, migrate, for example, to the east coast of North America and, and South America for working in the big meals of, 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 uh, of, of any kind of in, in, in mining or uh, agriculture, etc. So that's, that's the core of the meaning that was adopted. Um, at the same time, um, in, after, the, after 2000, um, the, 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 the protocols and also the, the national laws were, um, were upgraded we, because we have another phenomenon that was the internet. The internet, um, the World Wide Web, 
from the year 2000 till now skyrocket. So um, also there, are, there is the Palermo protocol uh, that this related to, um, it's more for cyber crimes. So there also the, in, in the Palermo protocol under the child pornography and, uh, um, and human trafficking, they also, uh, there is, you know, there is like, uh, you, if you see many phony jobs ads on the web, many, many, many uh, teenagers or uh, young uh, people, they apply to these uh, from, uh, from developing countries to these, uh, at, okay, I will have a job, I will work for in this kind of hotel or in this kind of place. Uh, and sometimes they, 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 they fit in the, in the, in the main of human trafficking because there, there's, there's a case in the US, um, it was, it was uh, I have it over here. It's United States uh, versus Pharrell. Pharrell was the owner of, uh, I will, um, and, and, and his wife, Angelita Magat Pharrell, um, they were, they violate the, 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 the title 18 of the, of, um, the, 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 the United, uh, the U.S. Uh, code. Um, okay, Prof, the, let me come in there. Let me come in there. We'll, we'll get to that point. Okay. I think you've properly covered the, the definition we wanted, just to, in the interest mm -hmm. of time. Uh, now, having looked at the definition, which is well brought out by Professor Marotta, uh, which is in the protocol, that is, I, I believe you mean, uh, you meant the protocol to the United yes. Nations Convention against transnational organized crime. That's right? Correct. That, yeah. That's correct. So let's, let's go on, Professor um, Dichobo. I, I want you to take us through, um, the definition, if, if it's possible, right, we've looked at the definition, we know that key elements there are action, uh, action, means, and purpose. Uh, those are the three elements that can decipher from the definition. Action in the sense that there should be recruitment or buying or selling or transportation of individuals, and means because there could be threats or fraud or deception, and uh, then the purpose, whether there's exploitation. But we, we know that this does not apply when it comes to trafficking in children, international law provides another standard. Uh, yes. The standard is that there is no requirement uh, for means. We just focus on the two. Uh, Professor Correct. Chobo, uh, let's look at the Rome Statute. Well, you know, you have a, a, an American doctorate, SJD, in international criminal law. That's quite an achievement. <laughs> and your professor of law at Kesh, Western Reserve University. Uh, tell us, or tell the viewers what you think about uh, trafficking in persons as a crime within the Rome Statute, if it is a crime within the Rome Statute at all. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Professor Milton. Uh, the definition in Rome Statute, according to me, is not clear. If we look at the Article 7 to C, the wrong statute just talk about trafficking, enslavement, but trafficking, particularly children, women, and children. That's good. But the wrong statute can also use the Article 21, which uh, permits the court to use uh, international law to apply the, the wrong statute in the jurisdiction, that's, that's fine. But what we have today is uh, specifically about children. I would say women and children, but women and children, Dr. Marata just uh, highlight that. A child porn, you know, a sex trafficking by cyber crimes. Today, the judge, the lawyer needs to be training <laughs> to IT stuff. A lot of things happen in dark web because today is what the, the means they use. I know what I'm talking about. Dark web. When you get in dark web, I do a lot of research about that. Since uh, two years, uh, I, I started research about <laughs> a difference. 
if you get in that way, we can, it, it can, it's difficult to identify who is behind that because a lot of things happen. They trade, uh, sell uh, ch ch uh, children to the different industry company. They sell organ traffic, uh, they traffic uh, human organ there. But who is buying? Who is it selling? We don't know. So today is very important for all the world, not only ICC, but I see all the world to review the legislation. We need the rigid legislation, update internet regulation to fight that. To sum up, the definition is not clear in Rome status. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, that is well brought out. Uh, Article 7 to C that you've referred to uh, actually talks about it's a crime against humanity that relates to enslavement. That's right, Prof. Exactly. Yeah. And what, what they refer actually, what, what how trafficking comes in, as you said very ably, is that in the cause of trafficking, so it's just in the cause of it, uh, when the, the persons, and mostly it has given emphasis, as you well brought out, on women and children. And this is the thread that we see running through all through. You, you could have, uh, I think, I'm, I'm sure you're also well versant with the elements of crime, uh, which addresses that particular, it's elements of crime that brings it out, but it is in the footnotes. And the footnotes is where we find the talk about trafficking. Uh, it, it is emphasized that it is understood that the conduct described in this element includes trafficking in persons, and in particular, women and children. And it refers to, they mention this when they talk about crime against humanity of deportation or forcible transfer of population and sex slavery. They even refer to it when they're talking about war crime of sex slavery, sexual slavery. Thank you very much, Prof. Now we go to Professor, uh, Professor Dichobo, as we said, is an adjunct professor in, at Kes Western Reserve University School of Law in the United States. He has a French background. You might hear when he speaks, there's a bit of French. That is his, his background. He has some background in French. So I hope you understand. Now we, we get to uh, Professor Sripathi, who is uh, a professor of international law in India with over 30 years experience teaching and producing international lawyers. Uh, Prof, uh, Prof Dwarakanath, uh, good to have you back. Uh, we have a question for you, Prof. Uh, the question would be, what is the relationship between human rights and human trafficking? Over to you, Prof. <laughs> Now, speaking of trafficking in persons, according to the definition that was very clearly explained by Marota, uh, forcing a person into something against the will of that person and without the consent of that person. In other words, it's a kind of, uh, what you say, imposition upon a person without the person's consent and will. And uh, trafficking is one of the worst kinds of human rights violations, particularly against women and children. So there is a very close relationship between trafficking and human rights violations. Trafficking is the most blatant form of violation of human rights. I say it is the worst form of violation of human rights because the victims of trafficking are particularly women and children. They are the ones who are being trafficked. And we all know that why women are trafficked. The main reason for women being trafficked is for prostitution and uh, removal of organs is also one of the purposes but the main purpose is prostitution and uh, 
another thing angle to trafficking is uh, that of children now children also traffic and uh, in fact uh, if you see the facts of trafficking two years back the estimated number of persons trafficked were 45.8 million and india remains on top my country and uh, india is both a source and a destination a source for trafficking people outside the country and it is also a destination for people being trafficked into the country so it is definitely a violation of human rights because uh, they are all aware as to what a human right is and uh, and different definitions have been given to human rights like uh, they are said to be birth rights divine rights natural rights inherent rights that is a person is born with rights that is what human rights are and a human right is necessary for a person from the time he is born for his progressive development till a person dies and in between if these kind of atrocities are directed towards any person that is trafficking it is certain that they are violation of human right so the question that was put to me the relationship between trafficking and human rights is that there is a very close relationship trafficking is a violation of human right there cannot be anything else in this uh, dimension and uh, for trafficking to be regulated it has to be done at three levels that is at the international level the regional level and the national level. and at the international level we do have uh, conventions particularly the convention on the suppression of the traffic in persons and of the exploitation of the prostitution of others 1949 and then of course the protocol to the un convention and uh, there are several other instruments at the international level which are in place and at the regional level particularly in the south asian region we have sar that is south asian association for regional cooperation where uh, the south asian countries have drawn up a plan for regulating trafficking to control trafficking and uh, at the national level in india we do have a lot of legislations that have been made in india and these definitely play a very important role for regulating and preventing trafficking in persons so this is what i have to say and uh, thank, uh, you, thank you professor milton thank you professor dwarakanath it's good to have you back after only one break you've never yes. missed any panel any panel yeah. discourse that was unfortunate it was beyond <laughs> my control <laughs> yeah but you explained yourself and uh, yes, we are happy yes. to see you uh, on the same note we are also happy to see uh council manrit kaur yeah hello It's how are you see you <laughs> yeah thank you yeah how are you how are you doing Bye. everything is fine absolutely uh council uh, kaur is an assistant council uh to at uh, the international criminal uh, court and uh, it's good to have you now <clears throat> uh, professor sripathi has well elaborated on the issue of international human rights vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, the rights in connection with the rights of the uh, persons being trafficked in now let's have an overarching approach uh, to all these matters uh, we know that as already mentioned by the professors here in different uh, perspectives that uh, this scourge transcends all boundaries it's not confined it's actually not just across uh, uh, the borders but it can also take place nationally within the country so trafficking in persons can also take place within the country it doesn't necessarily have to be across the border 
But now let, let's get one step further. Um, talking about countries, do we have legal obligations imposed upon uh, the countries in terms of trafficking persons? Uh, do we have legal obligations in terms of uh, uh, international or global uh, in, uh, framework and national framework or regional frameworks? Uh, we want somebody to be able, one of the professors, the panelists, the distinguished panelists to be able to expound on this. Uh, but before that, let's give uh, Manrit, Council Manrit, uh, you know, you've joined late, but we, we've been dealing, we've actually dealt with the definition of the, of, uh, the crime of trafficking in persons. Uh, we have dealt yeah. with uh, whether that definition uh, also applies or whether the crime is available within the Rome Statute. What do you have to tell us just in about three minutes only, uh, just to catch up with us? Maybe you have something to tell us about trafficking in uh, I'll keep. Uh, I'll keep in a very uh, simplest form. I, I'm not going uh, on a theoretical definitions. I'm just taking talking about the practical, practical manner of this the trafficking. Trafficking uh, is actually a modern slavery. Is now it's it's a modern slavery, and uh, it's it's a, it's a very well organized crime which is happening all around the world. And the, uh, I'm talking about the most hotspot countries of the trafficking is one of the uh, one of the uh, southeast uh, southeast Asia is uh, uh, Thailand, and uh, which is which is the very famous for the human trafficking, and uh, Eastern Europe, Europe uh, Moldova, and uh, in in some part in the some countries of the Afri African part. And uh, uh, more, uh, how, what, uh, what kind of the people and uh, who, who are at the risk on the human trafficking? Uh, if, if, we had, if we say, we can see everyone, everyone, can be the, everyone can be the victim of the human trafficking. Most of the, but most of the risk of the human trafficking uh, are on the most of the 70% to the women, women and the kids. And those vulnerable people, which which are not protected with the properly legal and uh, not uh, not and uh, they are not uh, even protected by the social, uh, social socially socially, who are unprotected from the legally and the socially, they they can be the victim of the uh, human trafficking, and. Uh, in the estimated, approximately one million people uh, are trafficking each year at the global level, and twenty thousand to fifty thousand uh, the, the the people are trafficking. Most of the is happening in the U.S. trade, and the U.S. is the most human trafficking uh, the the hotspot area in which the uh, human trafficking is happening. It is the largest distribution of the sex trafficking trade. Human trafficking is actually an organized crime. It, 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 it's not happening only only with the, some of the people. It's happening with the all the uh, political leaders, governments, cab drivers, and the smugglers and the uh, criminals. They all have their sophisticated networks and the connections, and so that uh, it is possible. And the, it, it's happening. The main the main portion, the main ingredient, the main uh, offense of the human trafficking is the prostitution. And if if we stop the prostitution, the uh, we we can we can we can handle until the 70% of the, we can stop the 70% of the human trafficking. Although the human trafficking is the, is the four, four types, trafficking of the force, forced labor, trafficking for forced criminal activities, trafficking in women for sexual exploitation, trafficking for removal of the human organs. These are the main uh, four, uh, four things which are happening all Thank around you very the world. Much, council. Thank you very much, Council. Not intending to uh, hurry short. We only have 10 minutes to go. Uh, but thank you. I think you've covered very comprehensively. We appreciate it. Uh, now, uh, Professor Marotta, I, I think we almost cut you short that time. Let's look at very quickly, we have two last topics. The first one will be, the second last will be the global plan. We need to look at the global plan that is in place, the framework uh, to be able to combat uh, human trafficking. Uh, in about three minutes only, Prof, so that we attack on another situation yes um, um there there uh, the, the, inter the international tackling uh, of how we address uh, human trafficking it has it has in the last past 10 years focused in three in three cores one is inter the inter-american uh, uh, commission of human rights that no 
they have uh, their own plans, how they, they, they address the problem in, in America. You know, on the other hand, in Europe, we have Eurojust and Europol working together with international with the Interpol, how to tackle uh, that situation. And through Australia, India, and uh, I think it was New Zealand, we have the core of, of, uh, and of Asia, how we control that. And also we have uh, in Africa, lastly, all the, the Federation of Countries of Africa, they also they have a plan. However, um, under uh, what we are uh, dealing, dealing now with the COVID-19 situation, we saw that uh, every group was, uh, I mean, they were like, one was going one way, the other was going the other way, and we need to unify uh, how we are, go the strategies that we are going to do from, from here to the future, how we combat um, uh, international human trafficking. I recommend there is a video uh, that, that, is, that you can find it on YouTube, that is, that is named Nefarious Merchants of Souls. It's a yeah. very interesting, interesting documentary. I recommend to our, all our viewers and professors to see it because Inder explains uh, the cause of, in, 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 uh, of uh, international human trafficking and how it's a very prof prof profitable business. So why has endured in, 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 in the years. It's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's, like, uh, it's like the drug smuggling. It's the same, it's a very profitable uh, business. That's the reason why many uh, or crime organizations, not only they go, for example, on drugs or uh, lodging or, uh, or, or mining, always is attached with uh, human trafficking because it's a very profitable business the, the, the open markets, for example, I am doing, uh, um, I'll finish, I will, I, will, I will share you with you in one minute. Um, I'm advising for Earthworm uh, related to, the Earthworm is an NGO related to, to, to social accountability related in, in, in the rainforest. However, uh, they have uh, found that in the places that I work in, there's like human trafficking cases. So I'm working with them in advising them um, what the political issues and also trying to the, the this NGO that's working with agriculture uh, companies, how they advise uh, the workers not to engage in when this uh, in, in the bars you know, in the kind of stuff of, of, of kind of engagement of prostitution or other, uh, other kind of, of sexual services because there are um, not only uh, local persons that are um, that are part of, of human trafficking, but also uh, a lot of aliens, uh, aliens persons. For example, there there, there, there is a triangle uh, in South America that is the border between uh, Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. That there is a lot of that. That is a, this is a very hot spot of, of Venezuelan uh, uh, girls and women trafficked for prostitution, and also they. Are. They end in, 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 in Brasilia or Rio de Janeiro or in Bogota or in Lima or in other big countries of, 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 this, of, this, uh, of this triangle and end up in, on prostitution. So um, many NGOs that they are not working in, 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 in for example, like, uh, like us in international law, international criminal law, they see this and they need the aid. So, I mean, they are, they are, they are catching up about that. However, All right. thank you very uh, much, Prof. Sorry, to, to, our to, time to is up. The, the north. Okay, thank you, Professor. I yeah, let, let's let let's address. I didn't want to thank you so much, uh, Professor Marota. Is uh, Dr. Marota actually is a specialist uh, in international human rights law, and uh, he's he's been part of the International Criminal Court for Abuse of the Child, and uh, he's researched very widely in that area. That's why you see he can proceed nonstop. All right, uh, let's address the issue of the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime. Because when we talk about the protocol that provides us with a definition for the term transit, um, I mean, uh, trafficking in persons, it emanates from the protocol to this particular convention. Um, maybe we can have someone to handle this just generally in about one minute, because we are left with only uh, two, three minutes actually. Uh, what do we, what can we say about uh, this particular convention? What does it do for us 
what is the role? Any panelist is open, it's an open card. <laughs> yes, Prof, okay. Professor Shobo. Yeah, I can go. Uh, you have two minutes on the one that, minute, actually. <laughs> okay, I will suggest the, <laughs> the wrong statue to uh, prosecute human trafficking under is Article 21 1D. Because it will be difficult to prosecute that crime under Article 7, 8 because of their elemental or legal element of qualification. In domestic law, we need to train it. It's very important to train the judge about that because in some cases it's difficult to identify the mass area, the intent. That's the, is the big issue in the human trafficking pr prosecution. So it, it's good to con co consider the, 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 the strict liability in that prosecution what will be difficult in a wrong study. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, having told about, as we said, Professor Chobo has a French background and is a, a adjunct professor at Case Western Reserve University in the United States. Thank you very much, uh, panelists. That has been very, very erudite. We still have one more minute left. Um, can we have the last word about the national and regional uh, legal solutions uh, to this problem. Uh, probably Professor Sripathi or Dr. Marota or Professor Marota or Council Marit, any of you could, just in one minute, because that's all we are left with. <laughs> as far as Asia is concerned, we do have the SAT regional transaction and uh, other regions like uh, North American continent and the South American continent may be having additional conventions for regulating human trafficking or trafficking in persons. Similarly, EU, the European Union also must be having a few uh, conventions, regional conventions, and uh, the European Court of Human Rights and the European Convention on Human Rights also has provisions dealing with trafficking. So, All right. Thank, thank you very region. much. Our time is gone, Prof. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but we appreciate it. Thank you very much, panelists. Thank you, uh, Professor Chobo, Professor Marota, Professor Darakanat, Council Marit. It has been a pleasure having you, and we hope uh, our viewers have really enjoyed. Until next time, uh, when we'll be able to discuss, have a discourse on something else that is of interest to you, we say bye-bye for now. Thank you so much. <laughs>